Pokemon Nuzlocke turning the cute video game monolith into a war zone. Pokemon Nuzlocke, you only get one Pokemon per route, and Pokemon that die, stay dead. There's a bunch of other rules, but here, you can read them. I'm not a teacher, I barely understand this myself. But there are so many of these Nuzlocke's and YouTubers dedicated to doing them, I need to do something never done before. So I gave myself just one hour to get everything I need to beat the game. After that one hour is up, I cannot use any item that I didn't get within the time limit. This includes new kinds of Pokeballs and even TMs and HMs. So needless to say, this challenge could get real nasty. God damn it! And oh yeah, all Pokemon are random and so are their abilities. <laughs> but I'm sure that won't matter at all. Ah chat, I think Ursa Ring is the best choice for the beginning. Run one starts with a bang as I get Ursa Ring as my starter. It's a strong, fully evolved normal type. Oh my God! Oh, is, is that Route 1 Rayquaza? Oh, hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's run two. All right, everybody, run two time. Damn it. My next run starter is my Lodic. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I don't I don't know either. After naming it Jamer, after one of my subscribers at twitch.tv slash yearbudtevin, where you can watch these live and I stream almost every single day, please come into the chat. I run into this optional trainer with Relicant. Okay, I can beat a Relicant. It beats my ass. I lose my Lodic to a Ladybug. God damn it. And I know what you're thinking, Tevin. You suck at Pokemon. But to that I say, yeah. Okay. Attempt three starts hot with another great Pokemon in Ludicolo. hey -oh! And after catching this Ralts, ah! Suicune, I'm the luckiest man in the world. And Phoebus, we can officially get to Pewter City and challenge Brock for the first time. Now, since I need as much money as possible, I decide to take on the optional gym trainer before Brock. He leads with a Politoed and I have Ludicolo. This should honestly be a cakewalk, as all he does first is set up a parasite. But this is where we need to have a conversation. With only an hour to get as much money and items as possible, I'm in quite a bit of a rush. I can't really take the time to look at someone's moves or EVs, for example. I don't know if it was just the time pressure or what. Ugh. Anyway, I lose Ludicolo, Brock has a goddamn Venusaur. Dude. And that's run number three. After a tutorial loss on attempt four, run five gives me the choice of mid one, mid two, or mid three. But since my chat lost their mind over Dunsparce and his cute little penis tail thing. So after getting the map this time, grabbing a Lanoon named Useless on Route 1, which could have been a Regirock by the way, and an Elekid on Route 22, we're ready for Brock again. Cause I have to rush through this, uh, Tom. ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME?! And even though he has a fucking ho ho, Useless the Lanoon proves quite the opposite and sweeps the first gym with stab headbutt. Kill it anyway! I don't give a fuck! Kill it anyway! Yeah! How about to be useless to go? Finally out of the first area, with one hour not being that much time, I decide that the most important thing for me to do in that time is finish Nugget Bridge. Nugget Bridge is a long road of trainers that culminate into a final battle with a Rocket League grunt. If you beat them all, you get a Nugget, which sells for $5,000. That is an insane amount of money this early in the game. With that, I'd be able to buy enough Pokeballs to hopefully get a decent team and make my way through the game. This run had insane potential, and after getting Medicham and Hitmon top before Rock Tunnel, the team was looking strong. And then the power went out. No, there's no save. My power. Oh my God. My power went out after that perfect run. It's almost as if the game itself was like, look, man, I see what you're doing. This was just not the way Pokemon was meant to be played. Get the cute Pokemon. Buy some plushies. Buy eight versions of the same game with just slightly different Pokemon on it. On the sixth run, I was determined. No more fucking around. I pick up a Seedra as my starter and run into a level four Raichu with Thunderbolt. Okay, I guess more fucking around. Ah! Okay, run seven. This time we start with the Swampert. So it's time to actually make this a run. And despite the fact that I literally skipped my first encounter, I pick up a Ninetales and a Swablu and challenge Brock again. Except I over leveled the Swampert on accident and this man has a Regice. No! 
Wah! Okay, now even I'm starting to lose it a little bit. My hope is down going into run eight, considering we haven't even gotten out of the prep stages yet. But then, when everything seemed lost, when I checked my starters, and this thing is a monster. I smoked through the beginning of the game, picking up Natu to cover Tyranitar's weakness to fighting, destroy Brock, get stabbed Rock to for Tyranitar, and then proceed to stomp my way through the entire prep stage. Oh my god! This is the run. I don't give a fuck. Modest nature? Oh my, this is the greatest Pokemon. There's never been a better Pokemon. <laughs> I managed to make my dream team and get all the way to Nugget Bridge. And because it's my challenge and I needed all this money just to have enough for Pokeballs, I decided that it's okay to do the whole bridge and it's fine under the rule set. But first, the rival battle. Big mistake. Big mistake. Okay, that was fast, but now let's do the bridge. Okay, well damn, this team might be too overpowered. Misty's Pokemon were literal trash can garbage babies. Huge power rock tomb. <laughs> just did that from the beginning. This run gets insanely boring at this point. How many ways am I supposed to say, and then we beat the shit out of everything before I just beat the game and we all get bored? There's just no way to stop this team, let alone the monster that is Lucifer, the huge power Tyranitar. We pick up a few more encounters, almost all of them solid additions to the team, and then head to Vermilion City. SSA and rival fight are like rival ass beating. I get cut, but I can only use it outside of battle. This is true for all the HMs I pick up in the game, since I need them in order to actually beat the game. And then we move on to Lieutenant Surge, the gym leader. And the hardest part about this guy was actually just the gym puzzle, which I got immediately right, by the way. <laughs> it's going so well that I'm wondering if this whole Nuzlocke will just be beaten deathless. I mean, with my video game skill and my pseudo legendary with double attack power, we're moving like Shaq and Kobe. Celadon City Gym is a wash. Is she okay? Do we even get an awesome encounter in the gift Pokemon Eevee, or should I say Venusaur? But unfortunately, after thinking it through, I realized that I probably couldn't use it. I didn't buy that Pokeball. So, into the box you go. Anyway, after clearing out Celadon City and the Team Rocket hideout, and sweeping through Lavender Tower, killing Cubone's dead mother's ghost for the second time, we head down to Silphco. Silphco's annoying puzzle aside, things were going pretty smooth. I was well on my way to speedrunning this area when I start the rival battle against, yes, you read that right, God Sexy. What killed the dinosaurs? Daddy's aid! My Tyranitar got frozen by Sexism's Glalie, but the team was so stacked by this point that I honestly didn't even mind. Hell, I was so confident that I'd smoke through this fight, and then Sexism's next Pokemon hit the field. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, Groudon, for sure, for sure, man. Not only that, but it's higher level than my entire team. He has something super effective for damn near my whole team, but my team is insanely strong. Okay, uh, things are looking a little tricky at this point, but we might make it through. There's only one way we really lose at this point. If you don't know, the move Ancient Power has a 10% chance to give the Pokemon using it a boost to every stat. And this legendary Groudon now, out speeds, out tanks, out damages my entire team. Including the only Pokemon that can match it, my Tyranitar. I wiped to God sexism and his God Groudon. After going through my depression and the necessary stages of grief, and after eight attempts, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to quit. My fallen team wouldn't want me to give up now. In the next run, I pick up a Marsh Stomp, and even though it's a great pickup, there's really just no way it compares to- Okay, we are so fucking back! <laughs> Entei is my third favorite Pokemon of all time, and my favorite Legendary, and with a Legendary on my side, we might actually be back in this run. Also, yeah, I know, I scream like a white girl getting exposed on TikTok, but I caught an Entei with a Pokeball, all right? I'll be excited. Shut up. Heading up to Brock, the team was looking nice. But this wouldn't be the greatest Nuzlocke run of all time if there wasn't a little bit of opposition. And in this case, opposition came in the form of a 20 foot long mythical creature with I assume the greatest throat game of all time, Gyarados. You have thrash? Wait, wait, is that, is that thrash?
Losing Inte. <laughs> My favorite legendary to the first jib. <laughs> What's the point of this run? This silly little game has put me through nothing but grief. Why on earth would I even finish this? The stress of catching pocket monsters has aged me, made me untrusting, alienated me from everyone I love, and chilled my once bright heart. I can't keep doing this. Check the starters, and I get Mewtwo as a starter. Oh, that was supposed to feel. I'm not just on an emotional roller coaster. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. Anyway, with my new Mewtwo John in hand, this run takes off. We smoke through the prep stage in record time. Okay, wait, stop. Do you see this Yanma? This tiny little flying bug? This thing is going to become so important to this run. Han the Yanma is the greatest Pokemon to ever exist. But more on him later. We're so fast with this team that I managed to make it all the way to Vermilion City with no issues. Except for, yeah, you know, a random Mew encounter. Okay, I gotta try Mega Punch with John then. Thankfully, Lieutenant Surge was a pushover because my next few encounters in the rock tunnel are, well, I would say unbelievable, but at this point, is is anything unbelievable anymore? What else could happen at this point? Mewtwo starter, then a Mew, a Kyogre encounter back to back to back. And with Mewtwo being the unstoppable force that he was, Chat and I felt it was appropriate to give him a name change. It fits so nicely. Now you might be asking yourself at this point, Tevin, a few Pokemon have died along the way, shouldn't we? Didn't we talk about him? If you're not strong enough to carry my team, you'll be thrown out on the side of the road. I've become hardened, a machine simply made for- This video is already gonna be long as hell, so. The fight against Giovanni was the first fight in the run that actually made me sweat. Oh my God, what the fuck? Why? Was it the remarkable strategy he used to outwit me? No, I used Encore when his Miss Drevis used a super effective move into half my team, and I almost wiped myself out. Oh no. Thankfully, we pick up another goat for our team. Oh, do you remember him? This is Tom, the Yanma. He's a cute, single evolution bug in this generation. And normally, as all bugs are, he's a pile of steaming hot butt bug. But Tom, oh, Tom's different. As a matter of fact, I would go as far to say that Tom is the greatest Pokemon I've ever seen in my entire life. And trust me, I tried to hate him. When I bring Yanma to swap out Hobo, I guess. Nah, you're not cool in the box. Come on out, buddy. Hypnosis, Tom, you could cheese it up. Hypnosis in the double team and the quick attack might just be hella stupid. Damn! That's better than Sonic Boom. This is it. This is your swan song, John. Or Tom, I keep calling you John. This is your moment. Play the fucking music! Not to mention Tom. Stop bringing up Tom. Tom is not your savior. He is a bug. All right, Tom, let's see it. You're supposed to die. You're supposed to lose. Boy, did I think wrong. Oh, this is not good for you. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Okay, all right, here we go. You've run out of luck. Little boy was standing on business. Talk hey, really? You're just running in a favorable ass matchup. Dude! Oh. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing. Oh my God! That was the story of how a tiny bug just beat the whole shit out of the gym. <laughs> One shot a septile, that's crazy. What the fuck? <laughs> There's nobody that can handle this. It's Tom time. <laughs> it's not Tom time. Holy shit. Tom does it again. I hate it here. I hate it here. I hate it here. Double crit. Only he has done that. 
I don't even have to go back and heal, right? Dude, you are the luckiest SOB in the world. It's never a legendary. It's always fucking the ease, the, the thing that is, I have never seen luck to this extent. Your luck runs out. Your luck has to run Psych. out. <laughs> Apparently not. Tom Swift the Jim. <laughs> We'll put Tom up for victory road for now. No, I didn't expect Tom to be any good. Tom kept running into the easiest shit. Tom, I'll give you one attack. If you can survive this one attack, I'll let you go out peacefully. <laughs> that is the greatest Pokemon of all time. <laughs> I, I can't deny it anymore. I can't deny it anymore. I have to retire him. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Tom, Tom is now the greatest Pokemon to ever, to have ever existed ever. I'm sorry. I forgot to take him out, but guess what? It doesn't matter. The only thing more powerful than you is you. Never mind. Tom, you have well and earned your retirement. And with that, there was nothing else I could say. Tom had earned his way into my heart and the annals of history. Congratulations on retirement, Tom. Your job is done. Now, before we go into Victory Road, we spend the remaining money that we got from the prep stage. We didn't have much, but it was enough for a few potions. And with no ability to heal once you enter the Elite Four, even a few potions is better than none. Victory Road can be a problem for some, but for me, the hardest part was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was the puzzle again. All right, Victory Road, our last encounter. Teach Earthquake, I can't. Oh, that's my encounter! All right, we have 18 Pokeballs. It ain't happening, chat. Five balls left. Last ball. Everything rides on this. All right. Okay, now I need to push. There's a rock below me. Wait, what? This is just the most frustrating task of all time. I guess the only option is to take this boulder and go all the way over there? But that would make no sense. It's not even possible. I'm missing something super fucking obvious. I need the boulder to fall down the hole. How do I get boulder to fall down hole? Oh, are you kidding me? Is that what I really have to do? That's so ass. Okay, this boulder has to go all the way around. Last night took a lot out of us. I respect it. This is the moment and it's finally time. No more runs after this one. And this is the final team that we bring in. Zeus, strong fire and flying typing. OG Fish Taco to deal with dragon types and just raw power. Pochita because he'll just beat the shit out of everything. Tree Man for water, rock, and ground types. And Lore 9 with Stab Earthquake to roll everything else, especially the steel types. But I actually don't have much belief because the inability to heal through the five hardest fights in the game is essentially a death sentence. Gojo knowing recover, and there's a chance that we can do this. Up first is uh, Ace Trainer Kimberly. It starts off fine, and since my Pokemon are already in top shape, Things are looking good. Salamence takes some damage from Alakazam Future Sight, but we get through the fight relatively unscathed and use a potion to restore just a bit of health. Up next is Ace Trainer Marilyn, and the dumb game AI allows Lore 9 to go crazy until we run into another Salamence. Thinking that this is an easy rock slide for Lore 9, unfortunately, someone has to take this hit. With Fish Taco being a higher level, my assumption was that she would easily take the hit. I didn't even consider the fact that I could just have Lore 9 take the damage. Hoping that Dragon Breath one-shots, I have no choice but to just let it fly. Taco! Ah! Ah! The Salamence fights through the Paralyze, and Fish Taco becomes the first one down. Ah! Rest in peace, buddy. The Paralyze allows me to outspeed, so Gojo comes in and gets the kill. Giraffe Rig comes in next, and it could've been somewhat of a wall since it resists Psychic, but with its ability being Drizzle, Jojo takes it out with a blue, oh, I mean, uh, Water Pulse. The rest of the fight is super clean, and we use a few more potions to get our health in an okay place. Ace Trainer Thomas is third, and immediately causes problems by putting Lorenine to sleep. I have no way to wake him up, 
So that's a major problem. And it continues, as Venomoth also sleeps Gojo. Ah, spaghetti. Thankfully, a one-turn sleep allows Gojo to recover and take out the Venomoth on the following turn. Sharpedo is next, which is a massive threat to everyone except Tree Man. And even though Tree Man gets confused, he and his thick-ass Kyle Lowry butt take out the Sharpedo, even manage to stay at full health. Up next is Tauros, who is a real problem with Stab Thrash. I ain't checking no damn speed, and I'm not a nerd. But I wish I was a nerd, actually, because Toro does, in fact, outspeed, and my four armed monster man messed with the bull and got the horns. That brings in Zeus, and although Toros keeps hitting the hell out of me, Zeus survives and finishes it off with a flamethrower. Up next is Blissey. And thankfully, Blissey sucks offensively, allowing me to wake up Loranine from his slumber. And then it's just a matter of whittling the tanky egg down with Gojo. Gojo finishes the battle, and the team is looking rough. Sure, we have four Pokemon left, but two are on their deathbed. Charizard is just too low health for 60 health to mean anything, but on camera up, there's a chance it can take a few hits. And now for the final Elite Four member. Gojo leads and I'm hoping for a sweep, but this explode was an entire pain in the ass. What the fuck? After that debacle, Raichu comes out next. Entirely walled out by Lord 9, so this was a free win. But then comes Skarmory. Skarmory. Now I have the perfect switch into Charizard, but I cannot switch in at all without it dying. Tree Man is weak to flying moves, and I need Gojo to be as healthy as possible for the champion fight. Unfortunately, there's no choice except for Lore 9 to do as much as it can. Skarmory hits a crit air cutter, but Lore 9 lives on just six health. And that six health allows us to hit the absolute weakest of rock slides before Lore 9 goes down. But it was that tiny bit of damage that allowed Zeus the Charizard to come in, outspeed with a flamethrower, and kill the Skarmory. Now there's still two Pokemon, first of which is Altaria. Gojo comes out and he needs to finish the fight. As Altaria goes for dragon dances, Gojo goes for confusion. And it's looking like there's a real chance the game is over. But at the last second. Oh! <laughs> it's so fucked! It's so fucked! We have just two Pokemon against our rival, Racism. With the weight of our fallen comrades and nine past runs on my heart, I go into the final battle. This is it. Gojo and Tree Man against Racism itself. I lead with Tree Man and Racism leads Kingler, an extremely lucky start, and it even takes out one of Racism's full restores. That sees me kill it with Magical Leap. Up next is Nido Queen. I have Tree Man start with Attract to hopefully get an Immobilize, but all I get is a Paralyze instead. I go all in on Petal Day and hope that Tree Man can do his best before going down. Yes! Tree Man valiantly kills two before going down to Soul Rock, and rock slide. This is the final battle. Gojo, by himself, has to defeat four straight Pokemon to win. And you know what? I think I'll just let the footage show you what happens next, because I don't think words will do it justice. It's time. Would I win? Huge, huge damage, huge damage. Wait! <laughs> oh my god, we can do this. This is doable. This is doable. And he has soundproof. Oh my god, he has fucking soundproof. He can't get sung to sleep. Okay, that's fine. Yes, he used his full restore. Oh my god, that's so huge. Oh, dude, I'm shitting and coming. You hate yourself so bad. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, 1v2? 1v2? This is actually doable. Oh my god. Oh my god. Gold Duck and Gojo. Nah, I'd win. Nah, I'd win. Please, no crit, and we win the game. <laughs> we did it! We did it! Oh my god! This was the. This
This was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It took every single thing we had. Tree man, Lord Nine, Zeus, Pochita, Gojo, and Fish Taco. Oh, great job, guys. Great fucking job. You know, this game is a lot like life. There's a lot of ups and downs, but it's really about how you respond to the adversity in front of you. And if you try hard enough, you might even get a little lucky along the way. I could have given up after the Tyranitar run or Yente run, not bought those potions before getting to the Elite Four. I could have not confused the Altaria, could have not taught Attract to Blossom right before the final battle, but I did. And through all my struggles, my shameful misplays, my game losing confidence, and even the game itself wanting me to fail, I won. This is one of the greatest stories I've ever seen unfold, and it reminds me of why I play Pokemon. We get attached to our little buddies, and we both grow and climb to achieve something that feels impossible, and even something as small as a potion can make all the difference.